In this video, we're going to continue uh, to learn about functions in Python. In particular, in this video, we're going to learn how we can write our own functions. So let's create, uh, go ahead and create a new file and let's call it user-defined functions. That's the technical term for a function that uh, we define on our own. And let's briefly um, recap what we have learned before. So we are talking about functions in the, in the generic sense. And we have introduced uh, the concept of a callable, which is any object. And we have learned by now that everything is an object in Python. So any object that can be called. And called is just another word for executed. And uh, we have seen two examples before. And the two examples were, first of all, built-in functions. So function objects that are already in memory once uh, we start a new Python process. And then also we talked uh, about constructors, which we can call like functions, but they are not really functions. So let's maybe also give one example each. So for example, we have the sum built-in function here. And for example, for a constructor, we have the int constructor, for example, which takes any object, any numerically parsable object, and um, cast it as an integer object. Okay, so uh, and now comes the new uh, idea. Namely, we want to define our own functions. That's the technical term, defining. So that's why we call this uh, subtitle function definition. And um, let's go back to our very first example in this course. And the example, of course, you remember it. It goes like this find the average of all even numbers in a list. And um, I gave you a list um, to, to work with, so let's do that here as well. In previous videos, we um, call this list uh, numbers, but for now I will um, call it integers. And uh, you will understand in the next video uh, when we talk about function scopes, uh, why uh, I do so. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, define the functions just for the example. So this would be 12 numbers uh, from one through 12 in uh, no particular order. So I always try to keep the same example so that you are not confused. So that's uh, a list of numbers. And uh, previously, how we went ahead and uh, solved the problem um, goes uh, as follows. We, um, and that was the, the second way of how to solve the problem, which, uh, was in the video um, talking about best practices and uh, a little bit about PEP8. That's uh, the other video where we learned about this. So what we do is we write um, a list comprehension to create a new list object out of the existing one that only keeps the even numbers. So this could be written like this. We write n for n in integers if n modulo divided by 2 has no rest. So that's the definition of an even number. And then we assigned this list, uh, this new uh, list, to a variable called events to make um, the program easy to read. Uh, that, is, that is why we called the previous video where we introduced this idea uh, best practices. So you want to keep your variable and your programs uh, readable. And then uh, we go ahead and we use two built-in functions, namely uh, the sum built-in function and the len built-in function. To create the uh, to calculate the average, and if we want to make this a little bit nicer, we would also go ahead and assign the result to a variable called average, and then uh, write the average variable towards the end uh, of the code cell so that we can see the result. And now this is a very uh, readable program. So what is the downside of uh, of writing code like this in a, a Jupyter notebook? Well, the problem is, let's say um, I give you a different list of numbers, and uh, I ask you to calculate the average of the evens of a different list of numbers then what you could do is you could go ahead and you could go back to the first code cell. You could change the numbers. You could um, copy paste over the new list that I give you. And then you would execute the first uh, cell again to update integers. And then you would um, execute the second cell again to calculate the new average. However, that is not a good way. So whenever we want to, um, to whenever we want a piece of code to be repeatable, then it is good to put it inside a function because functions 
as we see with um, the built-in functions, are just there to be re-executed. So the whole idea of a function is to reuse the code that is uh, in it. Okay, so let's learn about how we do that. So make this code repeatable with a function. So let's go ahead and define, that's uh, the dev statement. So let's define a new function. Every function must have a name. However, there will be, um, okay, it's actually not 100% uh, the case, but just as with built-in functions, a function could have a name. And uh, for because we are talking about a beginner's course here, we will give every function for now a name, but there will be ways in the future um, of uh, how we can uh, create functions without a name. But let's go ahead and um, name the function average events. So a good name for a function is always a name that kind of tells us uh, what the function does. Average events, so that's what we do, what the function does. The function takes parameters as input. So um, we write parentheses here. These parentheses are not the call operator to call the function, but these are just parentheses that define the parameters the function takes. And this function for now will only um, take one um, parameter and let's call it for now integers. We will change that in a future video as well when we learn about the new concept. And then we end the, the line with a colon and um, ending a line with a colon, we, we learned before that that means the next line will be indented by four spaces. And now let's um, stick to a good practice. So um, the good practice is to always document uh, what the function does. And how this is done is with a so-called doc string and a doc string is um, simply a text object in Python, so a so-called string object. And um, because this is going to be written over several lines, it is uh, within triple quotes. So um, we have uh, three double quotes here and another three double quotes. And in between, I will break the line. And now in between those triple double quotes, we can write anything. And this will just be the documentation for the function. However, there are a couple of conventions and the one that I like to use um, is um, goes back to the um, so-called Google Python style guide. Um, Google, as we know, is a big company. They lose, uh, they use Python a whole lot, and um, so many people, even outside the Google uh, universe, um, uh, adopted the Google Python style guide. And we will do so in this course as well because it's a, a rather easy one to write and um, also to read. So it goes like this. The first line is the subject line, which is a one line summary of what the function does. So let's simply write, calculate the average of all even numbers in a list, dot, period. Then we're going ahead and we leave one line empty and then we will write arcs, colon, and then we will simply mention the parameter, so we will list all the parameters, the same ones that are in the parameter list up here. And uh, we will briefly do the following. We will first, within parentheses, specify what data type we expect. So let's maybe uh, write here, we expect a list of ints, of integers. And these are just the whole numbers to be averaged. So let's briefly describe that. And then a function is going to return something. And this is going to be called the return value. And so we will simply write returns. And uh, for lack of better um, term or word, we will simply call it average. And then also in parentheses, we will write the, the data type of what we will uh, get back. And this is a float data type. So this is um, how um, you will see functions uh, being defined. You have the first line, then you have a doc string. And then um, in recent years, um, it has become a best practice in the Python world to um, use um, a syntactical concept called type annotations. And this is something that is not so important for a beginner, but I will briefly um, show it to you how it looks like because this makes uh, the function look a little bit nicer. So instead of um, writing the data type uh, in the doc string, what people do is they will go ahead and write the, the data type followed by a colon or uh, separate by a colon inside um, the, the first line. And then we will here have an arrow. So it's a minus sign and an arrow to the right. And we simply write float here. And um, we could then go ahead and simply remove those parentheses and then the data types would be in the, in the header line as well. So these are two different ways of how to do it. Um, in this uh, video, I will 
or in this course also, I will for now stick with this type to not um, make this a bit too complicated, but just to already uh, tell you that uh, this is what you probably will see uh, some people do. Um, some people would just write the data types here and that has a couple of advantages, but for beginners, it's not uh, that important. Okay, and now let's go um, inside the function definition and now we have to write the function. So one way of uh, how a beginner would probably do that in the beginning is we would simply go ahead and after we developed some code outside a function, we would simply go ahead and maybe copy paste this code in here. And of course, uh, every line has to be indented by four spaces. And then in the last line in the function, we have to specify what the function is going to return. And there is a, um, a, a statement for that, and it's called the return statement. So we simply write return, one space, and then we are going to write one expression um, whose object, to the object to which it evaluates, is given back by the function. And in this case, we will simply give back average. Okay, so now, um, first of all, you may now wonder um, how does Python not confuse um, the different variable names? So we have outside uh, the function, we have variables evens and average. Inside the function, we also use them. And in the next video, when we talk about function scopes, uh, we will talk about when a variable is visible at, um, you know, or from where a variable is visible and wh when they disappear and so on. Um, for now, um, let's just understand that uh, Python within the function will uh, first of all um, look at the variables inside the function, of course, and this integer here refers to the parameter. And um, now we, what we are going to do is we simply execute this code cell and we see that this code cell does not have um, um, a return value below it. There's no output below the code cell. And that means this um, code cell as a whole has a permanent side effect most likely, and it does. So um, the def statement um, creates a new function object in, um, in memory. So let's briefly um, go ahead um, and see what that looks like in a memory diagram. From the pr previous video, I already have the sum function in the memory diagram. So in future vid videos, I will not um, draw any functions that are built in because we, we can assume that they already exist as objects. So this is just to contrast that to a built-in, uh, to a user-defined function. And now what our um, function definition does is, it basically creates a big box in memory. It writes all the code in there. So these are the three lines um, that solve the problem. Then we also have a data type and the data type will be function so i will abbreviate it with func and then on the left hand side uh, we will have a variable name and this is simply average events and this is simply going to reference the function object okay and uh, that is what the memory looks like and that is also why we don't see anything uh, below the code cell because the reference to the function object that we got back we assigned that to a variable and whenever we do that um, simply we don't see anything uh, below a code cell so now let's see what can we do with the function object. Well, first of all, we can, uh, we can of course go ahead and reference it, it. So by just saying average events, I get back a reference um, to the function, just like I get back a reference to, for example, the sum built-in function, right? So this is basically referencing the function without executing it. And now what we could do is we could go ahead and average um, uh, and call the average events function. And we do so of course, with the um, call operator. And if I now do that, that without input, I get a type error and it says missing a required argument. And that makes of course sense because we specified one parameter and we didn't provide the function call a, uh, an argument for that. So um, that is why what we are going to do here is we simply go ahead and we are going to give a reference to the list integers um, to the function by simply specifying or writing down the integers variable as the first argument uh, to the function. If I execute this, I get back 7.0 and that is basically the return value. And then often what you do is when you call a function, let's copy paste this, usually what you do with a function that gives something back, you store the result under some variable, let's call it result here. And then by doing that, we don't see any output be below the code cell because the entire cell as a whole is uh, not an expression. It is, uh, it is a statement that is not an expression. There is a previous video talking about the difference between what is an expression and what is not an expression. However, 
um, the result variable is created and now has the value 7.0. Okay, so let's end this video with a discussion of a couple of technical terms. So um, first of all, one important distinguishing is, um, is um, when we specify the input that the function takes, we call that the parameters. In this case, we have one parameter. When we call a function, the input that we give a certain function call, this is what we call an argument. So an argument is what you put inside the function when you make it run. And the parameter is um, the thing that you specify one in the, in the moment when you specify the function. Okay, so this is just, um, you know, um, two different words. Um, specifying either, either it is the uh, view from the inside out, so that is the parameter view, or from the outside in, what do we path inside the function? Um, and then we call that an argument. So integers here would be the argument. And of course, what you could also do, you could um, also go ahead and call the average even function and I create a new list object, so to say, on the fly. So I could, instead of um, passing the function a variable as, as the argument, I could also pass the function a new object as the argument. So let's go ahead and specify a list. And um, let's simply write the numbers 41, uh, 40, 41, 42, 43, and 44 in there. Why do I choose these numbers? Well, um, I want to uh, make a sanity check here to see if the function is correct. So I give the function um, input for which I can in my head calculate the output and averaging the events in these five numbers, I can uh, clearly see that the average should be 42.0. So let's see if the function is correct and I get back 42.0, okay? So this is uh, avoiding um, uh, semantic errors. And there's also a previous video um, that talks about what semantic errors are and how they are different from uh, two other kinds of errors called syntax errors and uh, runtime errors, okay? So there's a whole lot more to be learned about functions. Um, we do that in separate videos, uh, one topic at a time. So, but this is uh, for now, this is how you um, create a function, you define it. Um, don't forget to always use a doc string. Sometimes what you could do is if you don't want to write everything down, just write the one line summary that is often enough. So you could actually remove the arcs and the returns part here. And um, yeah, so this is uh, basically the basics uh, of how to write um, a function. So I see you in the next uh, video.